Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a video on Ableton Live 10, specifically the new features that are available in Ableton Live 10. For those of you that may not have upgraded to Ableton Live 10, or you just want to know what the new version has to offer. All right, so let's get into it. There are four new devices available in Ableton Live 10. First thing is Wavetables. Wavetables is a new synthesizer they've added into Ableton um, that has a lot of flexibility, um, especially in the new update coming out. Um, and it's very simple to use. Um, unlike some of the others, which may require some basic knowledge, this is very simple. You can adjust the different type of wave that you're using. You can add a filter in, you can change how it interacts with LFOs and things like that. It's a very useful tool. And uh, it has a lot of um, presets and things like that as well that will be able to help you out. Now the next thing is the echo, which is an audio effect that you can use, which expands upon the simple delay and ping pong delay in Ableton. And what it enables you to do is basically create an echo, add some reverb, that kind of stuff. It enables you to, you know, get fancy with it, add modulations in, add some character. So, you know, wobble as if it was from tape, some noise, that kind of stuff. It's a very useful and very simple um, echo or delay tool. Now, the next thing that they've added in is another very simple one for people that are new to this kind of stuff is the pedal, which it enables you to add distortion of three different types straight into the clip. Um, also enables a sub feature. There are programs that do these and do it better, but these are built into live. And if you don't have the kind of repertoire that someone's been that like someone that's been doing it for a long time, this can be really useful for you because you know without these kinds of things, you you simply can't do it. Alrighty, the next thing is Max for Live, which is now built into Ableton, which is fantastic. And on top of that, it's got lower CPU usage as well as faster loading times as well. This adds a whole bunch of instruments and effects and you know that kind of stuff into Ableton, adds some functionality. Um, and it's, it's a pretty great tool. And I honestly think that a lot of people get a lot of use out of it, especially considering it expands upon the simple effects built into Ableton with some more advanced ones as well. The next thing is, just like with all releases of Ableton, there are some new collections packs available as well. So being able to expand your instrument library, um, I think the amount that you get by standard is dependent on which version that you buy. Um, so, you know, if you don't really have a collection, it may be worth purchasing the higher version so that you get some of those packs together so you can start making music very easily if, you know, working inside of a digital audio workstation is your thing. Um, again, just like with the others, if you don't have it, you can't do it. So. There you go. To kick off the new features, there's quite a few here. First one I want to talk about, which I love, and I when I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, that I need that, is Capture MIDI. What it enables you to do is, as long as the track is on, so this red little button down here, or if you're in the other view, over here on the side, what it enables you to do is it actually enables you to, you know, say I'm playing on a beat, that kind of stuff, boom, 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 boom. But I forgot to hit record. Not a problem. As long as that MIDI track is armed and I'm playing through that, I can hit this little button here and it will insert the clip right in as if I was recording, captures the timing and everything. Now the next thing is related to MIDI clips. And so previously, you know, you click on a MIDI clip, you can edit it, that kind of stuff. I created two here just to show you. And so what it enables you to do is you can actually edit multiple MIDI clips in the one window now, which is so handy. So you can see here, I've made one blue, one yellow to distinguish. It gives you the names as well of which channel it's from. And you can also click at the top, you know, you can change them in here, blah, blah, blah. The other thing is you can also do this in the arrangement view as well by selecting them both and you can see it here, alrighty. Now the reason why this is shown up like this with this marker here is this is telling me that it's a repeat from that point onwards. And so from there I can then see, you know, these both repeat at the same time. So if I made a change there, it's going to go back there as well. Now the next thing is there's a whole bunch of improvements done to the arrangement view which I want to talk about. Now we can actually select specific points and it's going to show me in that MIDI clip exactly where I want to be. You know, I want to be just this part here and add this note in, perfect. Oh, but I need to zoom out and see how I affected it. Boom, it's all right there. This also applies across both. So not only can you add, you can edit MIDI clips both at the same time, but you can apply the same thing to both and edit them through, you know, this one here, and then I want to put that underneath, um, and then expand out and see how it affects the whole thing. It's all right there at your fingertips. Alrighty, now the next thing is some another thing added to the arrangement view, which is one, the ability to scrub through. So by holding on a 
uh, Windows computer is Control Alt and Shift. I can drag through and select exactly where I want it to start from. This applies to audio clips as well. So on a Mac, that would be uh, Command, Option, and Shift. Alrighty, enables me to drag through. All right, so the next thing I can do is rather than having to duplicate, which the way I do it is usually this and then drag it around, etc. Now you can just select the section that you want, go over to the top section of the clip, which allows you to you know, move it around. And then what you wanna do is you wanna hold control um, and then drag it straight across and voila, I've just copied it straight away, boom, you're done. But I can't tell you how easy that makes things. Same thing on both tracks at the same time. Boom, you're done. So much easier. Now, the next one is gonna require a sample. So let's just take, I don't know, whatever the hell that is. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so again, I can drag through it just like I showed you before. But the other thing is as well, click the clip, hit R, reverse it straight away, no mucking around. The other thing is, is when you see as I go over here, now this is only available when the automation view is off and I'll get to that in a second. Um, you can quickly add fades straight in, change the curve, boom. Just like that. Now. That's another thing I wanted to get into is I used to hate in all the previous versions of Ableton how if I added in an automation it'd just stay there constantly and I'd find myself clicking it and messing up the automation I did. It was very frustrating. But now it's in a separate window. So you can push A on your keyboard or click this little button up in the top here and it turns it on and off straight away, boom. Just a quick little side note, like I said before, automation view needs to be off to be able to do this with audio clips. Um, again, it's so that you don't accidentally click it when you're meaning to do something else. And audio automations will be straight in here. You can still add them in as separate things so they're always there, duck them in and out, that kind of stuff. But when you push A, it goes away. Now, another thing which is in terms of the browser on the left-hand side that is extremely useful, so the browser can be toggled on and off easily as so by double-clicking on the side. Now, another thing that's really cool, and you may see that mine doesn't really have anything there yet, and the reason for that is I reinstalled my uh, operating system recently. I used to have these all colored. So you've got, I believe it's seven colors to choose from, and the way that it works is, so you can see I've got favorites with two of the ones that I commonly use. What you can do is, is you right click and you can set it to particular things, different colors meaning different things, and you can rename those. So, I don't know, uh, say this one's uh, samples I like. Whoops, samples I like, and so, Obviously choruses are not a sample. So then I go into sample packs or whatever it might be. And I don't know, I like this particular one here. I mark it, I click up here and boom, it's all there ready to go in one window. Very, very simple, but very, very well organized. There are only seven colors that you can choose from at the moment, and I'm hoping they add more later, um, but it's just so you can see here, you can also clear all the colors as well. So for example, you can actually attach multiple different colors to one. If you don't want it on any of them, you get rid of it, boom, you're done. Another really big one, and this is something that I think everyone's been waiting quite a while, is you can now export different audio types through Ableton. So lossless you can go in here and quick between AIF files flax and whams and then also you can encode straight into mp3 straight out of ableton thank you this is actually being expanded upon as well like i spoke in my 10.1 video um, with some new additions that i think you'll like if you want some information on that just check the video in the link in the description below Another big one, and this ties into some of those things that are quality of life to prevent your frustrations, and I can't tell you how many times I've done this and then had to try and work out what I did, is when you save an Ableton Live set, so when you go in and save, it removes your undo history in previous versions of Ableton. Not anymore. So if I was to go in, and I don't know, whoop. Now, so if I was to go in, and I just go in here and I call it, nah, that'll do, you'll see here that it does not remove my undo history. Every previous version of Ableton, if you save the file, it'll remove your undo history. And then if you decided that you wanted to go back to something you did before and you forgot about it, that's it. Too bad. You've got to try and work out how to do it again. Um, so again, another thing that's very useful and really just really makes you focus on being creative, basically, without having to, you know, oh, I didn't do this or I did this and now I've screwed this up at blah, blah, blah. Let you focus. Now, on top of that, the other thing that it does is it also saves 10 previous saved versions of that project file in Ableton. So if you did something and you saved it when you didn't want to and you want the other one back, you can go into the project file and just load it straight back up again. There you go, up to 10 previous versions for that project, for each project, I should say. The other thing that you can do is, let's say, now this is something that might be common, like, you know, for example, say you've got um, 10 drum tracks from different mics uh, that you've recorded, um, but then you've also, you, you've added in something on top of those drums. 
so previously you can you know you can group tracks but that's pretty much it you know this is the the drum bus or whatever you know this is the the xd apparently this is the drums and i can't spell drums so this is the drums but you can't actually you wouldn't be able to then subdivide these into further groups now you can simply drag across you know this is a separate group so let's say this is the acoustic drum and then i don't know this one here is our boom you know we've added in a digital boom that we've added in boom inside inside there you go you're welcome Alrighty. so in terms of the metronome there's some new features added in there as well so for a start there's new sounds we've got the classic we've got a click which I personally like better, and a wooden block. Fantastic. But then, to top that off, on top of that, you can enable it only while recording, which is so good. So what that basically does is, is as long as you've got a track arm and things like that, you click it to on, you can still turn it on and off in this mode, and then if you click recording, it'll play. But if you're not recording, it won't play, and it'll come up as red to say, hey, I'm only supposed to be on when I'm uh, recording. Now, this is something particularly just for Mac users. Uh, now, this is in relation to GPU usage, and I'm going to read exactly what Live said on the matter here. So, Live no longer forces Mac OS to use the discrete graphics card in multi-GPU machines such as the MacBook Pros. This reduces energy use and heat and improves battery life. So, from my understanding, what they're trying to stay there, say there rather is on systems that have a dedicated graphics card, it's not going to force it to run off the dedicated graphics card for the user interface of Ableton, which then enables, you know, obviously not using enough as much power if you're running it through just the integrated processing unit. Um, I believe that's what they're trying to say there. Either way, that's a very useful feature, especially in terms of using a MacBook um, or any kind of laptop because it reduces the amount of heat coming out and therefore it doesn't bottleneck your computer when it hits that uh, temperature gate, uh, sorry, when, it doesn't bottleneck your computer when it starts throttling down from the amount of heat that it's producing. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the video for today, guys. Thanks for watching. These are some of my favorite new features and additions to Ableton Live 10. There are many more available on the website. There'll be a link in the description that you can view so you can see which ones apply to you. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. Let me know which features you find the most useful or maybe some features that you feel should have been in Ableton Live 10 but just weren't there upon the release. Uh, the other thing is as well is I'm probably going to expand on some of this later in some further tutorials as well as on my blog on my website as well for those of you that want some more edu uh, educational videos and things like that specifically targeted around Ableton to start with in terms of its use. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because I do videos like this all the time in terms of tutorials and I also post my own music and music videos onto YouTube as well. Hope you have a great day. Take care and have a good one.